Well hi folks and welcome to another exciting episode of Art Tips with John. Welcome to the show that teaches you not only artistic talents, how to unlock your artistic passions, but also how to build an extraordinary business that may lead you to doing your artwork full time. Welcome to today's show. Okay folks, I want to talk about a real simple and quick topic here, because um, it's a question that came through last week, didn't have a name on it, so we're just going to call it Mr. Unknown. Didn't even tell me where it was from, so he lives in parts unknown, Mr. Unknown from planet unknown, who knows. Anyway, here we go. The question was this, John, what type of art sells best? In the 16 years, and I'm throwing this out there, in the 16 years that I have been running this business, the two main types of artwork that sells best is portraits and pets, but not just any portraits and pets, the usually commissioned pieces. Why do they sell the most? Why aren't people getting in touch and saying, John, I want you to paint me a mountainscape. I want you to paint me a seascape. I'll tell you why. Because more often than not, it's not emotionally attaching for someone to do that. So, you see where I'm going with this. Portraits and pets, what do they both contain? Memories! And what are we painters of? Memories! See where I'm going here. If you have an emotional memorial attachment to a subject, to an object, to a living or deceased subject, then you are going to be more likely to part with cash. Because guess what folks, that's the hardest thing. I don't care how good a salesman you are, that is the hardest thing to actually get any potential client to do at all. Aside from making a decision with some of them, the other thing is to get them to actually follow through and to send the money. More often than not, people know what they want, they just don't want to spend the money. However, I do have one or two clients at the moment, as wonderful as they are, and I love them to bits, but they cannot make a decision to save their lives and sometimes it is tremendous fun and tremendously frustrating. But I digress. So, if I'm painting a picture, for example, of a naval scene, shall we say, or very popular at the moment with a branch of our business called wrestleart.co.uk, I paint wrestlers, okay? I paint the famous wrestlers that you've seen on TV. Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Randy Savage, Ultimate Warrior, all the way through, you name it, and we take commissions. There's a cheap little plug. And no, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Here we go. So why is that really, really worth dedicating an entire page to and a ton of cash on Instagram? Well, let me tell you something, my learned friends, because the WWE have over, I'm going to say, probably a billion nowadays, followers, fans, people around the world. Now, can you imagine being a good artist, finding a platform. Now you've got to be careful with fan art. I'm going to tell you why in a moment. But finding a platform that you could sell your art and selling it to fans that are already start raving bonkers about the product that they watched in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s, and in the presence. Although in the presence, they are kind of too young for me to really make a, you know, a decent painting living from. So my target audience is those that are from the 80s, 90s, eh, early 2000s. So, why do you have to be... No, I'm going to digress here. The importance of focusing your target market is absolutely vital because as we said last week you can put as many ads out as you want folks you can do all the lovely paintings that you want great fine not a problem but if your fans aren't seeing them it doesn't matter so I have got an entire page on Instagram called wrestleart.co.uk. I have paid some of the wrestlers to actually do promos and shout outs for us such as the honky tonk man road warrior animal Al Snow, Diana Hart, the wife of the British Bulldog, Jerry the King Lola, Jake the Snake Roberts, and I think there's others in there as well. Now why did I do that? Why on earth would I invest more money in these wrestlers? Why? Because these are people that have grown up with my audience. Correction, Those, these people have had my audience grow up with them. 
There's an emotional connection there. If you've got the Honky Tonk Man, for example, telling you, hey, I'm the greatest single continental champion of all time, and I want you to go to wrestlart.co.uk and check out John Morris's artwork, don't be late, baby, because it's the best around. That's literally what he said, and literally my interpretation of what he sounded like. Honky, I love you, by the way, Wayne. I think you're a fantastic guy. I, you know, I'm just having fun. Um, I'm entertaining my audience, and I know you can understand that, but, it is absolutely vital and crucial that then you take that and approach your audience with them because you've got more of an opportunity to actually sell your artwork. Why? Because that little light goes off in their head and they hear, oh, I've got to check this guy's work out. To give you an indication, two weeks ago, we had down to about 69 people visiting our page. Now, this was done deliberately. Okay, now I know I'm going over a little bit of time here, but Sorry about that, folks. We had a little bit of technical issue there, but I'm back. Anyway, what was I saying? Where was I? So that's why it is so important to have one page and segregate your artwork. Why? Because if you've got a wrestler next to a pet, next to a portrait, it gets a little bit confusing. So that's why I've got Pin Our Pet on Facebook, John Morris Art from the Heart for our main stuff, Wrestle Art on Facebook and on Instagram, but Instagram mainly, Art Through the Ages, um, Art Tips with John on YouTube, and everything links to the one website. Now can you see why it's important to actually go after these different audiences, so not to confuse them. Okay, so you have more likelihood at actually selling your artwork. Again, selling pets, selling portraits, if you are really good at them, once you learn your marketing skills, actually is quite easy to do. Why? Because people buy what they've got an emotional connection to. If you, for example, one of our most important uh, jobs rules, I guess you'd say, is capturing those memories on canvas. We do this mainly with paintings of pets and with portraits, and I'm going to wrap up here in a moment. We do this mainly with pet paintings of pets and portraits. Why? Because People that have passed away, pets that have passed away, still have a deep set memory and memory code within somebody's psyche. Do you understand what I mean here? If you've ever lost a pet or a loved one or a friend or a relative, you'll understand completely what I'm talking about here. We do these beautiful paintings to give the client something really special to remember them by. We do them at a high level and as soon as you start saying, look guys, as you get older, these memories fade. How many people have you lost in your life where you used to be able to hear their voice so clearly, but now you forget? How many people have you, or pets, where you, you, know, you, you had their fur or, and, and just their facial features and, and the smell, the breath and, and the noises that they used to make, all that kind of stuff. And as you get older and as time goes on a little bit, it feeds. That's why we put out their really special paintings. Again, that emotional connection. So to wrap up with, Emotional, emotionally charged paintings are the ones that sell the best, okay? And they're the ones that you can do the most good through. Pets, portraits are your ideal ones. The final thing I'm gonna say, if you are doing fan art, okay, especially wrestlers, be very, very careful, okay? When, when in fact, whether it's wrestlers, musicians, TV stars, film stars, whatever it might be, you have to be very, very careful because there are certain laws that will get you into trouble because you're using somebody's likeness. Okay, so I can be a fan of, you know, Rocky Balboa, for example. I'm a tremendous Rocky fan. Um, I can be a fan of, you know, any wrestler that you name, but if I use their likeness, I'm actually taking the property of the WWE, putting it onto canvas and selling it. And if they choose to, I can get in a lot of trouble for that. Now, thankfully, I'm all covered with a lot of these areas, okay? And I try to really, really watch what I do, but there are laws um, to doing fan art. So before you do any, and before you get very popular, my advice would be really, really watch what you're doing because the last thing you want, folks, is to infringe on somebody else's copyright and end up in trouble. So there's just a, a healthy, friendly uh, safety check for you. And uh, I hope this video helps, guys. I hope that answers the question of what kind of art sells the most. Pets, portraits, emotionally charged paintings are the ones that sell the best. Until next time, guys, this is... And, of course, if you would be so kind as to like, share, and subscribe, 
I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, take care, God bless, and I'll catch you soon.